Bitcoin's price, is it a distraction from its meteoric rise to the stunning plunge in the new year? Everybody's talking about Bitcoin and the other cryptocurrencies. Joining me right now is North Island co-founder Glenn Hutchins in a recent Financial Times interview. Glenn, it's great to see you. Great to be here, Maria. So you did an interview with the FG and you say people are missing the point by just talking about the price of Bitcoin. See, uh, people are focused on Bitcoin as a store of value. I think the more interesting element of it is as a means of exchange. It's a very nascent industry that reminds me a lot of what the Internet was like in the early 90s. But it has the potential to create, for, for, as a technology, to enable us to move anything of value around the world at the speed of light, just the way we move emails today. That would be, that's transformative. It's a fair degree of distance away because there's a lot of engineering and company formation issues that have to be business model issues have to be solved to get there. So that's why I'm a small investor in it, but I've invested across the, the businesses. I'm much more interested in businesses than I am in the, the store of value, the gold equivalent unit of Bitcoin itself. We, we talked with uh, an investor earlier this morning, Dan Moorhead, who right. started Pantera Capital, right, who was sure. the, the first fund well known. Uh, for, yeah. for right. Bitcoins, actually. And he was saying that it's totally free. You could move money across the world and it's free, but there are transaction fees. It's not free, but right, it's a exactly. lot cheaper. So if you look at uh, equi trading of equities, we've taken the price, the cost of that down by about 98% in the last 10 years. From wow. an eighth of a quarter plus a commission to a penny a share. And then look at ETFs, right. and, driving it lower. And so, but the cost of transferring money has stayed at a high level for a very long period of time. 2% of transaction value for credit cards, 7 to 8% for international remittances, 9 to 10% for payday loans. That can, if you take a, you can take a huge amount of the cost of that out of the system by implementing new technologies to reduce settlement costs, clearing costs, custody costs, fraud costs, all the things that go into making it very, very expensive. That's what the Bitcoin technology, the Bitcoin protocol, as it points to the Bitcoin currency unit, has the potential to do. But it's a long way away. It's, a very, it's, it's like the Internet in the early 90s, and there are a lot of things to be resolved before we get to the, um, the use cases like Google and Facebook and Amazon that we have today. Look, you've always been so savvy on technology. You co-founded Silver Lake Partners, and that obviously was the first uh, private equity firm that actually did solely technology. Let me ask you about how you've invested in Bitcoin, because in the FT article, it says that you did not buy Bitcoin directly, but actually, tell me, tell me how you well, did. Yeah, that's technically true but I have I have owned I'm still on the board of a company and I buy the company's products and one of the products are ETFs that are invested in different of the coins so I've owned and bought and sold the ETFs it's true that I technically did not buy Bitcoin but I have had exposure to Bitcoin to Ethereum Classic and to Zcash through the ETFs that I bought as a, just a consumer of the products of the company that I sit on the board of. Well, you're really among the first uh, sort of leaders within in, in the investment world to, 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 to stick your neck out and say, yeah, I'm a believer here. I mean, Jamie Dimon obviously caught flack for initially calling Bitcoin <laughs> a fraud. He told me that he regrets saying it. Um, you've said that when it comes to Bitcoin, there's a difference between a fraud and a bubble. Explain that. Well, look, if you look at Bitcoin valuations today, there was a piece of analysis I saw the the day that showed that it had inflated more than tulips or uh, swampland or the Dutch East India Company, the other sort of massive valuation increases that have occurred over time. So it is entirely possible that valuation will turn out to be a bubble. But there's the, what I mean is, as the difference between a bubble and a fraud, is that the internet stocks were in a bubble in 1999. You look at long-term stock charts, that 1999 is still stands out. Absolutely. Right? But the internet changed our lives. Internet was a bubble, but not a fraud. That's a good point. That's a good way to say it. Right. The uh, mortgages in 2006, 2007 were both a bubble and a fraud. <laughs> right, 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 right. Okay. okay. Yeah. And so you have to decide whether my view is that you can make, since I don't think a lot about the Bitcoin value, uh, other people have, have calling it a bubble. Let's, let's say it is. Mm. That doesn't mean that the underlying technology that has the potential in 10 years time, not tomorrow, to fundamentally change the payments, the way we fundamentally email and other use of the internet fundamentally change what we do with information, can be transformative. What is it going to do to the middleman now? I mean, is that one of the reasons that traditionalists, I mean, the Financial Times called you the most well-known establishment figure to take a deep dive <laughs> on Bitcoin. I'm not sure which of those I like least, but go ahead. <laughs> but, but, you know, I mean, is, is the establishment not buying in because they're afraid they're going to get displaced by Bitcoin? Well, look, that, that, that's, there's a fair amount, fair, fair 
amount of that going on. Right. It's, that's the, the current mania for the blockchain, which is just the ledger. Just the uh, invoices and the and the counting device for the Bitcoin solution is easy to embrace by conventional companies because it's a technology they can use in an enterprise that doesn't put their enterprise at risk. Okay. The Bitcoin protocol, which is the rails across which value will run, and if, if we if if we get this right, will fundamentally disrupt a bunch of businesses. Now, I don't think it'll disrupt the banks as deposit-taking and lending institutions and regulated institutions with okay. anti-money laundering, know your customer, all that kind of stuff. I think they stay in place. But the credit card companies, the remitt remittance companies, the other companies that extract a lot of, of and, and the payments uh, businesses of the banks, right, that they extract a lot of value from, from simply moving value around the world. Will is, is highly vulnerable. Give us your sense of the regulatory environment and as it relates to Bitcoin and elsewhere, because I know you've studied this a lot and, and we've seen this rollback in some regulations in the economy, not as much in the financial services sector, but you were so active in fintech. Right. How do you see the regulatory environment changing as it relates to Bitcoin and elsewhere? Well, I think generally, uh, you know, these things go in pendulums. Uh, and the financial services industry had a lot of explaining to do uh, after the financial crisis, and we ended up with Dodd-Frank. Uh, are there areas in which that went too far? Did the CFPB, for instance, go too far in some areas? Probably. Mm -hmm. uh, and does that need to be corrected back? Yes. Uh, do the community and local banks need different kind of regula regulatory frameworks than the big uh, systemically important institutions, of course? Right. But it would be crazy to relax the capital standards for the big banks. One of the key things that we have that's a fundamental bulwark of our economy today in the United States, the right. Europeans have not done a good job of it, which makes their economies more vulnerable, is to have the capital replenished and, uh, and at higher levels in our banking system. That's a really important point. Glenn, we're going to see you on Wall Street Week this week. Thanks so much for joining us. My pleasure. Thank Glenn you. Hutchins, we'll be right